Yes, sir. Oh, I know it'll pay off. Thank you, Lord. After a while. I've got to keep on working. Yes, sir. Yes, I have. Because I want my... Yes, sir. I want my solid crown. That ought to be all of our testimony. I know my way. Yes, sir. My way will get brighter. Yes, it will. Even though my Looking forward to that day. That's why I'm on serving now. It's gonna pay off. I promise you. After a while. Yes, Lord. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is so good to be here this morning. It's so good to see each of you this Sunday morning. Anybody feel like praising the Lord this morning? Anybody come to give Him praise this morning? Anybody know God is good to us this morning? Anybody glad that He woke you up this morning? Started you on your way? Are you still clothed in your right mind? Well, we owe it all to the Lord. And I just stopped by to tell you, we, we got to serve Him. Because He's worthy to be praised. Anybody know He's worthy to be praised? God is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our praise. Everything that has breath ought to praise the Lord. Somebody said, if the robin can say thank you, I can say it too. Yes, Lord. Good morning, church. Good morning. I'm going to need some help this morning. I'm going to need some help lifting him up this morning. Anybody going to help me lift him this morning? Anybody going to help me lift him up this morning? Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sir. Let us look to glory now. Eternal Father in heaven, we come at this precious hour to say thank you. Lord, we thank you for one more sunshiny day. Lord, we thank you for watching over us all the night long. Early this morning, you touched us with that divine finger of love. You're able our eyes to fly open, see a brand new day, a day that's been coming ever since creation. And we just want to say thank you. And now, dear God, I'm asking that you would use me as your instrument, as your willing vessel. Lord, I'm asking that you would allow me to speak to your people the words that you would have for them to hear on this Sunday morning. Let your word fall on good soil, that it may spring up everlasting to everlasting life. Oh, we love you so much. We do lift you up, and we will forever magnify your holy name. It's in Jesus' name we ask it all. For his sake we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. And we certainly give honor to God who is my life. It is through him that we live, we move, and have our beings. Give honor to Jesus the Christ, who is and always will be the great head of the church. Give honor to the Holy Spirit, who is my comforter and my God. Certainly give honor to each of you all of my father's children. Give honor to my own family especially my very lovely wife, whom I do thank God for every day of my life. Church, there's a word from the Lord this morning. If you brought your Bibles, turn with us now to the book of St. Matthew, chapter 20. St. Matthew, chapter 20. This is the gospel 
according to Matthew. We like to read verses 1 through 12 for your understanding. When you find it, I'm certain you'll find these words recorded. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. And again about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle and said unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? They say unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. So when evening was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, Call the laborers, and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they, and when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received, received it, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying, These last have worked but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us when we have borne the burden and the heat of the day. Last verse is verse number 16 I want to read. Jesus says, So the last shall be first, and the first last. For many be called, but few chosen. I'd like to offer for a subject this morning. Serving the Lord will pay off after a while. Serving the Lord, church, it will pay off after a while. Did you know that there are millions of people all over the world who does not want to work? They don't want to work for anybody. Businesses are closed right now because the owners can't get employees to come back to work. People are becoming lazy. They stand at home. They working from home. They going to church from home. They finding themselves idle all day long. Now, 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 now that the pandemic has gotten better, folks still don't want to work for anybody. And folks still don't want to come to church. Now, 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 let's keep it real. How many people do you, do you think are truthfully working from home like they're supposed to? Do you really believe that that, that people are truly working eight hours a day from home like they're supposed to? Do you believe that in the morning after they've been at work for an hour that they take their 15 minute break? And then at lunchtime, do you believe that they only take a 30 minute lunch break? And then toward the evening time around 3 o'clock, do you believe that they, they say, well, I better take my last 15 minute break? <laughs> Uh, I'm just glad that these jobs don't have tracking devices on all the folks that are working from home. It'll be so many folks fired right now. Because I know everybody can't be on the honor system. Everybody ain't doing what they're supposed to do. But can I tell you that even though the boss man don't see you, can I tell you that God is looking at you. When you're supposed to be working, you can't work like you're working for the man. you got to realize that everything you do, you're doing it for the Lord. Just like in our text this morning, that there are a few different kinds of workers in the world. Just like it was in the Bible days, you still got different kinds of workers right now. Well, what do you have, Pastor? You have willing and eager workers. And they're always early, and they're always looking for work to do. <laughs> and then you have idle 
workers. Uh, all they want to do is have a place to go gather. Just, just a place to say, I went somewhere. They ain't trying to work, they just idle. And then you have self-seeking or pleasure workers. In other words, they, 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 they want a job that they like. They don't just want to have to work hard. They want to do something that they like. And then you have slofer workers. And, and they just lazy. They just downright lazy. Hmm. And then you have what we call slow moving workers. They sleep late. Hmm. Hmm. They get to work and they move around like snail. They just slow workers. And, and, and I'm very sure that everybody here fits into one of those categories. <laughs> At least one of them. Can I tell you that there's a big difference when you work for man versus when you're working for the master? Well, man says, in order for you to receive the benefits of retirement, you must work a certain amount of years, but not so with God. I'm so glad God is not like man. Anybody glad God ain't like man? <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad God don't, don't, don't treat us like mankind. In, in our text today, we're about to see how, how, how man gets angry with God for how he blesses those that are working for him. Folks down here will get mad at the way God is blessing you for working for the Lord. Huh. But, 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 I, but, but, but church, uh, I, I wonder if you feel like I do some, sometimes. Don't you get tired of folks worrying about how God is blessing you? They, you, they ought to... They ought to, they ought to find other things to worry about than worry about the blessing God giving me. Because I tell you why. Because I can't tell God how to bless you and you can't tell God how to bless me. We just ought to be thankful to God for blessing all of us. Good God Almighty. We're going to also see in our text today how some people will even question God about how he's blessing you and I. Some folks will say to God, they'll, they'll say, well, Lord, I've been on this battlefield working for you for 40 and 50 years, and, and I don't have a new car, I don't have a new house, but I see so-and-so just started coming to church, and you blessing them already. Folks have the nerve to question God about your blessings. Hmm. I think I ought to tell you, I think I ought to tell you that, 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 that what's for you is for you, and it don't matter what nobody else do, they can't stop God from blessing you. But I will enlighten you on something this morning. I will enlighten you on something. If you don't ever work or serve the Lord, when you come down to the end of this life journey, you don't need to be standing there asking God, where is your reward? Because if you don't work for the master, if you don't serve God, you will not receive no reward. I know I'm right about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, church, you just can't live on this earth all your life and never agree to work for the master. <laughs> because if you ain't working for the Lord, you ain't working for nobody. Because only what you do for Christ will last. He, God is the only one that does the hiring for his job. And too many times, Christians stop working for the Lord because they think they're hurting the pastor. They just stop working because they think they hurting the pastor. They'll get off the committees. They'll stop coming to church. Uh, they act like they they be working for for man when they ought to be knowing they working for the Lord. Too many times Christians will get out of the choir if things don't go their way. Too many times pastors are leaving the pulpit because they get angry with one member or because they say, I ain't getting enough salary. And they're walking out of the pulpit as though they're working for money or for men. We got to realize when God hire us, we got to stay on this job until God calls our home. You don't get to retire from being no Christian. And I think I ought to tell you that the race is not given to the swift of the strong, but to the one that endure to the end. You got to stay in this race all the day long. Hmm. Some of us are so gifted. God has blessed us with talents. Other people wish they had the kind of talents that you have. And you have the nerve to sit down on God. But God has blessed you with these gifts. Hmm. And, and I think I ought to tell you, I think this is a good time for me to tell you. Christians, we got to learn how to stop wearing our feelings on our shirt sleeve. 
We, we got to be strong. We got to learn how to be strong in the Lord. We got to learn that, that folks going to talk about you. Didn't they talk about Jesus Christ? That they're going to talk about you. But we got to be stronger than that. What if Jesus would have said to his father, no, nah, no, nah, father, you can go ahead and, and get me down off this cross. D -d Don't you see how those folks not, not accepting me? Don't you see how they still denying me? Don't you see how they still betraying me? Don't you see that, 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 I, that I healed the sick and raised the dead and they still won't believe in me? If Jesus would have said, Father, just go and get me down off the cross, they ain't going to die for him. If he would have said that, we all would have been lost. None of us would have a home in glory. But I'm so glad that Jesus was man enough, that he was strong enough to deal with bad situations going on in this world. We don't want to deal with nothing, but I stop by to tell you, you got to keep on working for the master, no matter what you're going through down here. I know the Lord is all right. As we take a look at this parable this morning, I need to let you know that Jesus was continuing his conversation with his disciples from chapter 19, going on into chapter 20. Well, in chapter 19, Peter had asked a question about what kind of reward would they receive since they had been working for Jesus ever since Jesus started the ministry. Peter wanted to know, well, what, what we going what we gonna get for doing that? And Jesus responded to him by telling him that, that at the end of the day, Peter, <laughs> y'all going to be greatly blessed. Y'all going to get to sit in, in, uh, 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 upon the thrones and judge uh, the 12 tribes of Israel. He said, y'all going to be blessed. He said, but, but Jesus had to let them know <laughs> that just because people serve him for a long time, <laughs> they don't get no special privileges in getting to heaven faster than anybody else. <laughs> Yeah, in fact, verse number 30, chapter 19 said that many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Jesus had to let them know that, 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 that the years you put in don't make it a, a rule that you're going to make it to heaven or get more benefits or blessings than anybody else. Now, now, now look at chapter 20. It's about to tell us why Jesus made that statement. And in this parable, Jesus wanted to show how graceful God is when it comes to our salvation. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad we serve a loving God. I'm glad that God loves us. And his, and his grace and his mercy is what saved this church. Yes, we all must work for God. But the point is, it's not your years of service that saves you. Hmm. Some of us have been working for God since we were teenagers. Some since we were 20, in our 20s. Some since we was in our 30s and 40s and 50s. But the years don't matter. What matters to God is that you accepted his call to work for him and that you are a faithful servant for the Lord. Hmm. Yeah. And because God is so good, you have the same right to the tree of life as those Christians that have been on this battlefield all their life. You can accept Christ today, and, and you will receive, huh, yeah, eternal life. Just like the ones that have been working for him 60 years. So don't feel like that you wasted too much time. Now, that, now, when you waste time, all that means is that you're not under the blood of Christ. When you, when you waste time, you, you go through a whole lot of things you don't have to go through. So it's best the day that you hear his voice to harden not your heart. It's best to go come on to Christ and give your life to him. I'm dealing with the text. I'm dealing with the text. But, but can somebody tell me why some Christians are jealous of other Christians? Do y'all know Christians jealous of other Christians? Do, do y'all know some Christians are jealous of other Christians? Yeah, I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach and I'm going to keep it real when I preach because I know this is real life situations. Hmm. And that's what was happening in our text. <laughs> yeah, the ones that worked all day long, they felt like they were entitled to more blessings than the ones who just started working. Now, now hear me, church. Hear me, church. God loves us all. And he doesn't want anybody to stand around idle all of your life. No, he don't want that. We all have a field to tend to. We all got some work that we need to be doing for the Lord. Didn't he say that the harvest is plenteous, but the labors are few? There's work to be done, but the labors are few. I'm, I'm finding out something that everybody wants.
wants a job, but don't nobody want to work. Everybody say I'm looking for a job, but, but they don't they don't want to work. Folks are just looking for a paycheck. And Jesus said you that you gotta work while it's day. For the night coming, and, and when that happens, no man can work. In our text, church, the householder here is God. The vineyard is representing the church and the lost world. We are the laborers. And if you look at verse number 8, the steward is Jesus. And as Christians, our work is not inside these four walls. But our work is outside of these four walls. We come here to worship, but we leave here to go serve. Yeah. I, I got to tell you that you're making a big mistake when you find time for everything else, but you don't have time for the Lord. I, I got to tell you, if don't nobody else tell you, Lacey going to tell you, you're making a big mistake. You better put God first in your life because he will not be second. Hmm. Now notice something in the text. It was God who goes out to seek and call men to work. When, when you look at it, when you look at it now, it said in verse number one, For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder and went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so that was God that went out to seek men to go to work. Now notice, it was not the workers who came to God. The workers didn't come to God, but God went out early to the workers. God went looking for them. And God is only showing us love. When he sees us idle, God will give us a challenge to come and work in his vineyard. Nothing is worse than a human being that spent his entire life idle, doing nothing to serve God. You have wasted a blessing. You have wasted a lifetime if you don't serve the Lord while you're here. I know God is calling you to work, but some people are ignoring God's call. When God calls them, you're ignoring it. Why are people ignoring God's call? I tell you why. Because they're enjoying the, the paycheck that Satan is giving them. But I got to tell you that while you're enjoying these things that Satan is offering you, you're going to end up getting paid by Satan. And how you going to get paid is he going to kill you, he going to steal what you have, and he going to destroy your life. That's what's going to happen to you if you don't turn and give your life to Christ. I'm sent this morning to tell you that serving the Lord will pay off after a while. And this is what I know, church. This is what I know. Everybody here is serving something. Everybody here, everybody that can hear me, everybody that can see me, you serving something. You either serving self in sin or you serving God in righteousness. It's, it's one or the other. You either serving yourself and you serving the Satan, which is sin, or you serving God in righteousness. Anybody here serving God in righteousness? I, I need to know. Are you serving God in righteousness? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. If you're not serving God, if you're not serving righteousness, I'm going to tell you why. The only reason folks don't serve God and don't serve righteousness is because they don't believe in God and they don't believe the promise of God for eternal life. That's why they don't serve God. You can give me any excuse you want to give me. The fact is, if you don't serve God, you don't believe in God, and you don't believe the promise that God has promised us of eternal life. I'm getting ready to close in a few minutes. Hmm. But I got to tell you, I saw God's love throughout this entire text. I saw the love of God in this text. Did you notice that the willing workers that he called early in the morning, how they accepted the first call? And when they accepted the first call, God softly sent them to the vineyard to work. He was happy that they accepted the call when he first called them. And God just softly sent them to the vineyard to work. And not only that, but, but God told them that I'm going to pay you a penny a day. In other words, God is going to give us eternal life. The sooner we accept his blessing, the sooner we live according to his word, God is going to pay us. So he told them. I'm going to pay you a penny a day. 
That's what he told the ones that were willing vessels, willing workers. But I want to point something out to you. Notice what he said to the latecomers. Now he didn't give up on them, but he did rebuke them. He said to them, why are you out here standing idle all day long? He was forceful with them because they didn't accept it on the front end. He had to go back to them. And he said, why are you standing out here idle all day long? But look, look what else God didn't do. He didn't promise them a salary. <laughs> no, he didn't promise them a salary like he did the, the first group that, that came willingly. But, but notice what he said to them in verse number four. He said, go ye also in the vineyard. He didn't say, I'm going to pay you a penny a day. But he said, and whatever is right, that I'll pay. Yeah, yeah. He said, that I'll pay. He didn't tell them what it was going to be. But he said, I I'm God and whatever is right, I'm going to pay. In other words, when you don't come, when God calls you to come, and you wait and, and, and do your own thing, and then later on you decide you're going to accept Christ and turn your life around, you got to trust God that he's going to do the right thing when your life comes to an end on this Christian journey. And that's all they had to go on. They just had to trust God because he never told them, I'm going to pay you a penny a day. He said, you go work and whatever is right, I'll pay. We got to trust him, church. God is so good. Listen, he's so good that even the ones that worked a long time for him, yeah, yeah, even the ones that, that, that never worked a long time for him, not the ones that came, you know, he, he showed up, he showed back up at, at, at the third hour. He showed back up at the sixth hour, the ninth hour, and then finally at the eleventh hour. But those that never worked a long time for God, God was still gracious to them. He gave them a chance to serve him. And when you talk about the eleventh hour, that's what it means, that, that at the close of the day, when the, work, when the work schedule was over with, when it was time for them to die, God still gave them a chance to work for him. Hmm. And, and that taught me a very valuable lesson, church. That taught me that we can't be going around here talking about who going to heaven, who going to hell. Just because of how you think they've been living. Because, because at the end of their life, they could be laying on their deathbed. And God can save them just like that. I know the Lord is all right. Even if they've been a sinner all their life. If they turn their life to Christ before they die, God will save them. And that's why I love him so. Now, now this is the reason. This is the reason why Jesus gave us the different times <laughs> that God called the latecomers to work. There is a significance with the scripture, church. And I want to point the significance out. God knew that some people then and some people now would be procrastinators. They will not come to Christ when they're supposed to come to him. And God knew that. But he had mercy on you and I. He made his point by using the Jews' workday hours. Now, back in those days, the Jews' workday was from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. They had 12-hour days. And in our text, the early call for work was made early in the morning, which was at 6 a.m. That's what he called the first workers. Now, 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 that's the time that work really begins. So when God calls us the first time, we need to be willing to answer and go to work for him and let him protect us and keep us all the days of our life. But God was patient with the ones that were slow about coming to Christ. So God came back the third hour, which was 9 a.m. And spiritually speaking now, the third hour represents one-fourth of their life had already been spent. So when he talk about that third hour, he's saying that now they, they, they done wasted one-fourth of their life being idle. Then God came back, y'all. He tried to convert them again. He came back at the sixth hour, which means that was noontime, which means they wasted half of their life doing what they wanted to do. But God came back and compelled them again the ninth hour, which would have been 3 o'clock p.m., which means three-quarters of their life have been wasted. But God still had compassion upon them. We serve a merciful God, John. We serve a wonderful God. And, and, I, and I think I ought to tell you, I think I ought to tell you that 
in verse number 16, Jesus said that the last shall be first and the first shall be last. He didn't stop there. He said, for many are called, but few are chosen. Why did he say that, Pastor? Christ wanted his disciples to know that a lot of Christians start out strong on this Christian journey. But sometimes they let the affairs of this world slow them down. For example, prove it. For example, when, 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 who would have thought that the very first workers in our text, the ones that were eager to get started working for Jesus, who would have thought that after a period of time, when, when, when they had worked so many years, who would have thought that they would have talked to Jesus like they talked to him? Don't you know they started grumbling? They developed a jealous spirit. They didn't even want the beginners in Christ to get the same reward that they got. So yeah, Jesus had a reason for saying it. I'm, I'm going to just make it plain. The early workers represented the Jews. Christ came to his own first. And then the latecomers represented you and I, the Gentiles. We had, a, we had to, to get the word of God and God gave us the same opportunity to receive him to have eternal life. Well, Pastor, why did God say many are called, but few are chosen. Why, why did he say that, Paul? i tell you why he said it. Because Jesus knew that on the outside, many people appeared to be true servants. On the outside, when you, when you see people, when you see people, you think that, that they are truly doing the master will. But God can see the inside of us. On the inside, they had never changed. They were just perpetrating. They were just putting on a good front. And God knew what was going on on the inside. They were counterfeit. They were not willing to totally commit their lives to God. That's why he said God calls many out of darkness, y'all, into his marvelous light. He calls many of us, come on out of the darkness into my marvelous light. And even though he calls them, he calls us, he doesn't always choose us. Why? Because God can recognize that the life we're living, you're not ready to serve him. And God ain't going to choose you if he know you ain't ready. If he know you're putting on a front, if he know that you just look like you're serving him, God is not going to choose you to be over his flock. God is not going to choose you to teach his flock. So many are called, but few are chosen. Thank the Lord. Thank you all right. I don't know about you, but I'd rather be chosen than to be called. I heard Jesus tell his disciples one day, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. And the Lord, all right, it doesn't matter how long it took uh, a child uh, to find his way home. Uh, we ought to just be glad uh, that they got on board uh, of this old uh, ship of Zion. Uh, ain't it all right? Uh, whether somebody uh, is two uh, or 92, uh, we ought to rejoice uh, every time uh, they give their life to Christ. Uh, ain't it all right? Uh, I love uh, the lyrics um, in Beyonce's song. Uh, Beyonce, uh, she gave a beautiful testimony. Uh, she said, uh, it took me a while, uh, but I'm finally here. Uh, so I just uh, want to testify and make it uh, crystal clear. Uh, see, I've been picked out uh, to be picked on. Uh, talked about uh, out of the mouth of my friends. Uh, I've been beat down uh, until God uh, turned my life around. Uh, I always uh, fall short uh, of being worthy uh, because I'm not good enough, uh, but he still loved me. Uh, that little girl said, uh, I'm not a superstar. Uh, spotlight is not shining on me uh, because I ain't good enough, uh, but he still loved me. Uh, can I tell you, in the eyesight of man, uh, you might not be good enough, uh, but anybody glad uh, that God still loves you? Uh, ain't it all right? Uh, oh, I'm glad to 
this morning uh, that I might not come up to your standards, uh, but as long as I'm on the battlefield, uh, I know God, uh, I know he's pleased with me, uh, and he's all right, uh, even though uh, you haven't been all uh, that you should be, church, uh, you ought to hold your head up uh, and tell the world uh, that he still loves me, uh, and he's all right, uh, one of these ordained, uh, it's going to all be over down here.
live in any kind of way. You got to accept Christ as your personal Savior. And you got until the time you leave this world. But that's not what I'm preaching. I'm not preaching for you to just do your thing until it's time for you to go. Because you don't know when you're going to leave here. I'm preaching that as soon as you hear his voice, harden out your heart and give your life to him. You may come by ladder baptism or by Christian experience. If you don't know him, church, today is your day. Today is your day. I'm preaching extra hard, and I got a reason for it. I got a reason for preaching extra hard. Because I'm tired now. I'm tired. I'm tired of seeing these young folks in Jackson, Mississippi, gunning each other down. I'm tired of seeing folks all over the world killing one another. And I know that they ain't got no home in glory for the life that they're living. So what I'm trying to do is warn everybody that I can. I'm trying to get you to repent, turn your life around while you still got time. God bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face forever shine upon you. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, praise him. Come on, praise him this morning. Praise the Lord this morning. Praise him. Praise him. God bless you.